video we'll look at some of group 7 displacement reactions and the oxidizing power of the halogens. You'll probably have seen a video or a demonstration from your teacher or perhaps a practical in class on these displacement reactions already. So I'm just going to go over some of the observations that you will have seen and then write equations for those reactions. So these are solution reactions. You take a solution of your halogen, so chlorine, water, uh, bromine, water, iodine, etc. And you add some of the halide ion to that. Then there's a solution again, so two solutions together. This could be potassium halide or a silver halide, sorry, a sodium halide instead. The first box there is blanked out because there are obviously a reaction between chlorine and a chloride. You're not really changing anything there. Similarly with the bromine and the bromide and the uh, iodine and the iodide, there's not really going to be any displacement reactions happening there. So those are being blanked out in the middle. First going to put on some of the observations that you'll see when you start. So the colour of the chlorine water is pale green if you remember orange for the bromine water and iodine and being a brown solution. So those are the ones that we've just looked in, la in the last video. The halide ions in solution will all be colourless. So filling in the top row when you wrap your chlorine, which is pale green with a colourless KBr, the solution will turn orange because you've liberated bromine. So you have indeed done a displacement reaction there. With chlorine and potassium iodide, again a reaction takes place, the solution turns brown and iodine is formed. Moving down the group now to bromine, we're going to have a look at uh, which displacement reactions occur there. So with the bromine and the chloride ion, the solution remains orange. So it starts orange because we've got bromine water there and it remains orange, so no reaction takes place. However, with bromine and potassium iodide, there is a displacement reaction occurs, iodine, I2, is displaced, therefore the solution turns brown as iodine is formed. Down the bottom there, looking at iodine with chloride ion, again the solution remains brown, so there's no displacement reaction because the brown solution is already there from the iodine. The reaction of iodine with bromide ions as well, again no displacement, the iodine remains in solution, so you see your brown solution. If you're unsure slightly of uh, whether you have reactions taking place or not, because some of the solutions are similar colour, browns, orange, reds, etc., then you can, as it says there, add cyclohexene. If you do that, then you can see the cyclohexane layer will have a particular colour depending on which halogen is present. If there's bromine there, it'll be orange. If there's iodine there, it'll be that nice pinky purple colour. So as I say, you may have seen those in a demonstration, done a practical, or just on the video uh, as well. Remember, some of the colours are quite important to figure out which reactions have indeed taken place. So looking at the table, you can see that the reactions that have taken place are chlorine with bromide, chlorine with iodide, bromine with the iodide. So we'll look at writing equations for those reactions. So with the chlorine and the bromide ion, we saw displacement with the bromine, so we saw an orange colour, so that's the overall equation. And then you can practice writing ionic and half equations for those. So stop the video and uh, practice writing ionic equations and half equations. So you can see the ionic equation written there in the middle. And then the half equations, chlorine is gaining electrons, so it's undergoing reduction. And then the bromide ion is losing electrons, so it's undergoing oxidation. So these are displacement reactions, but they're also redox reactions. The next one that uh, underwent displacement was chlorine plus the iodide, then liberated your iodine, so we saw a brown solution. Again, stop the video and practice writing the ionic and half equations. There you can see the ionic equation and the half equations, the reduction and the oxidation for that reaction. The last reaction that took place was the bromine, the potassium iodide, displaces your iodine, so we saw a brown solution. And again, I've written the ionic and the half equations for those. So as you can see, the chlorine displaced uh, both the bromide and the iodide ions. The bromine only displaced the iodide ions. And the iodine didn't displace either of the bromine or the chloride ions. So as you come down the group in terms of going from chlorine to bromine to iodine, they are less able to what we call oxi act as oxidizing agents. We'll just have a little look at that now. 
So it's the oxidizing power of the halogens, okay? So Cl2, Br2, I2, etc., as their molecules. So an oxidizing agent is something that gains or accepts electrons. And the halogens themselves are oxidizing agents because they can gain electrons to form halide ions, so the negative ions. And you've written these uh, gaining of electron equations and your half equations previously, where the halogen gains electrons to come become the halide ion. So the ability of the halogens, and it is important we talk about the halogens, your Cl2, your Br2, to act as oxidizing agents decreases down the group. Thinking about what we know about the electrons as we go down the group, we can then explain this. So as you go down a group, remember there are more shells, more shielding, therefore the attraction between the nucleus and the electron being gained is less, so therefore it's less able to act as an oxidizing agent. So in summary, where X or Y are your halogens, or X is your halogen, they're X2 and halide ion Y, if this displacement occurs, then X2 here must be a stronger oxidizing agent, accepts the electrons more readily, and the displacement occurs.